mama taught me how to live Daddy taught me how to give Both of them had their own sins Down to the river Every man has felt the shame All I love, it runs the same Father, hear us as we pray Today, we join Hunter in Virginia. The rut is right around the corner and it's pedal to the floor for the team. Hunter is hoping to fill his first out-of-state tag and his first tag in nearly three years. What's going on guys? It's October the 11th out here in Northern Virginia. We're set back up in one of my favorite spots. It is a tree that overlooks a little grazing field. Acorn flat right here below us, water behind us, and then bedding out here to our front. Uh, didn't jump up anything on the way in this morning, which is good. The last, I think, two or three times I've come back into here, I've jumped up deer. out last night so I'm thinking that movement's going to be a little bit slow this morning. This is one of my favorite spots to go hunt out here. It's usually pretty decent for movement in the mornings. So we'll be sitting here for a couple hours. We'll see what we can see. Um, usually movement happens between first light and it's about 7.30 to 8. So basically right now slipped into the stand a little bit late this morning so I'm just keeping a pretty good eye out it was pretty bright on the grass out here this morning whenever I finally got into the stand so well guys it's it's been a really slow morning um, we just had a turkey scoot through about well, probably 30 minutes ago now um, didn't know he was there until he was getting ready to exit my shooting lane so weren't able to do anything about that. Um, probably sit up here for another hour or so. If we don't see anything, then we'll go ahead and get down and go back to the house and come up with a game plan for this afternoon. But this morning has just been ridiculously slow. I thought for sure sitting in this spot that we'd have seen some deer by now. I realistically thought that we'd had a shot at a deer by now, but they just have not come through this spot, so I've seen a lot of squirrel, a fox, and a turkey. We'll stick it out and see what happens. So hopefully we'll come back to you guys here in just a little bit with something. Bat, bat.
Bah. Alright guys, so as you guys just saw, um, finally got her shot at a deer, a nice doe. Um, so basically what happened, you are sitting up here, um, and I had that fawn come squirt through. She came right down here below me, 15 yards, and I grabbed the bow and got ready, because at this point I was ready to just fill an out-of-state tag, and she turned around and busted back up. And then I saw two flags out that way, so... I grabbed out my extinguisher and pushed that puppy up to the fawn and hit a couple fawn bleats and the doe and fawn came right in. So the doe came in to 35-ish and then turned and went left. Uh, she worked left out to about 40. I, uh, put the rangefinder on the tree next to her before she got there so I had a draw point and range that tree out to 40 so I put my 40 pin on um, the shot's a little bit back I'm not very happy with the shot at all so we're giving her some time it's been about 30 minutes now 30 45 minutes um, I think that she went down I really do um, she was quartered away just a tad so we may have gotten in there and gotten something good. But, I mean, she never flagged. She kept her head down the whole way out, which is an indicator of gut shot. Um, but she was bounding, which is abnormal for a gut shot. So she went out to the edge of the field where I lost her, and I could see the fawn, and I watched the fawn for about 10 minutes sit back over here. And she was really focused on one spot on the ground, and she kept walking around it. And she would bleat every once in a while, and she ended up walking off by herself. I never saw the doe go. So I'm hoping the doe is dead, literally 75 yards from me. It'd be about a 70-yard run for her. But we're giving her some time. Um, we're going to climb down here in just a minute and go check out the um, spot where the arrow is and see what that looks like. And then after that, we'll make it audible on whether or not we're going to go ahead and go track now or if we're going to back out and call the game warden and let him know that we have one that's shot i know it's hit um but let him know if we're gonna give a little bit of time and try to come back this afternoon or what the game plan is and we'll go from there but stay tuned guys because hopefully we got a doe on the ground How's it going guys? So I just wanted to readdress um, what happened the other day. Um, I've had a couple days now to sit around and look back at what happened and watch the video about a thousand times. Also do some scouting. So I want to give you guys a little bit of an update as to what I believe happened as well as several other, several other team members and other people that I've contacted. So basically what we have come to conclusion is obviously the shot was back and high and we knew that from the get-go we knew that there was a pretty good chance that I was back into the guts um, based off of how she ran we thought that maybe we got that offside lung because she was quartered away just a little bit we were kind of hopeful going into it and then we found blood and blood looked fantastic like we were like okay cool um, found a couple spots with bubbles in it even and to me like that's very indicative of a lung shot deer so we proceeded on with searching and I didn't get to record very much of the search um, just because it was very spotty I spent a lot of time on the phone with um, my father and then other people that are involved in the team and we were trying to figure out what could have happened um, about halfway through the search uh, bumped the, up the baby that the doe was with and I didn't see the doe the baby was just kind of walking around aimlessly and that video you guys would have already seen um, and the conclusion that we came to is that we got muscle we hit super high super far back and all we got was muscle which is why we get that kind of reddish blood um, and 
fast forward a little bit into the track, I ended up calling Conservation out, and Conservation came out and helped search for a little while, and we found two more spots of blood after my last flood, and it was just not good. So then I went into a grid search after he left, and I grid searched that area for hours. Um, shot was at a little bit after nine, and I searched until 3.34. Um, before I had to actually leave that area. So I left. Um, that night I decided, we still had not found the arrow yet, so I decided I was going to go out and search and see if maybe by chance she was laying close enough to the side of the road where I would be able to see that Luminox sticking up and be able to find her. And had no luck with that either. So to find the Luminox or anything, we decided the best bet for myself to find anything was to just give it time, do some scouting. Um, that night, whenever I went out and looked, I found a doe that was in the same area, about 50 yards from where the initial shot happened, actually, 50 to 100, actually, it was about 150 yards from where that initial shot took place, and she was with a fawn, and she was acting really weird. She was milling around and eating, but whenever I flipped around and I drove back up through the area, she was actually laying down and licking up towards her spine, so I kind of thought maybe that was her... Um, but of course it was dark. I couldn't really see too much. So fast forward to yesterday and yesterday I was driving home from work and saw a doe with a fawn. I sat there and I watched her for a little bit and I could actually see she had dried up blood on her back. Um, and I kind of made the decision that was probably her. So I sat there and I watched her for probably 20 minutes at 25 yards. Um, and the shot was very high and very back, um, which is not what you want at all whenever you're hunting, but we kind of decided she's gonna live, obviously. I mean, we're talking, this was almost three days after the shot, and I had found her again and she's still alive. So the plan going forward is we are going to continue to hunt her um, and make sure that we get a shot. She was very, very, very timid walking. Um, but she acted fine. She acted like she wasn't really hurt. So the plan going forward is we're going to get back in there. We're actually going to set up on the other side, basically where they came from, and try to catch them coming in, because that's where I see a lot of deer at. I actually found a persimmon tree over there while I was uh, searching for blood. So that's what we're going to, going to go for now, is we're going to switch up where we're sitting at, set up on the other side of that little opening and see if we can catch them coming in a little bit easier make it a little bit of an easier shot because that 40 yard shot was a very 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 far shot i've never shot at a deer that far with a bow um so that's the plan going forward is we're going to try to get in a little bit closer to them and make that shot a little bit easier um so next day in the stand for me will likely be sunday night uh kind of depending i'm going to keep looking at deer cast see what deer cast says and then for sure Monday morning we will be in that same stand uh, trying to finish it off on that doe. So stick around, stick with us, um, and we will get back to it here very soon. But um, back in Missouri right now, we've actually got youth season coming up here in two weeks. So team member Caden Montague will actually be out in the stand in two weeks with a rifle in hand. Uh, got some really good bucks for him to look forward to. We've actually got a really nice about 150s 10 that's been staying on the property very, very, very consistently. So we're hoping that's the one that we'll be able to get him in on. But till then, just stay tuned, guys.